Donc aujourd'hui, on a André et à Marie-Aline hein, qui vont justement bah, vous parler de leur expérience, vous donner justement leurs leur cinq secrets euh, pour que vous puissiez avoir plus d'informations sur euh, comment travailler par rapport au permis. Euh, voilà, eux, c'est vraiment des professionnels, ils vont parler de, votre, de leur expérience euh, et vous donner vraiment des, des conseils. Donc on va commencer justement à s'introduire en français, ensuite on s'introduira en anglais. Et puis, on commencera un peu l'interview. Donc, moi, je, je poserai les questions justement à André, Marie, Aline, pour que vous puissiez avoir plus de réponses. Et puis, on finira par les questions-réponses pour que vous puissiez avoir vraiment une réponse détaillée par rapport à vous et, et votre situation. Voilà, et, ben, et donc, je vais laisser ben, Marie, Aline commencer à voilà, se présenter en français dans un premier temps. Ok donc, normalement, vous devriez m'entendre. Si ce n'est pas le cas, dites-moi. <rire> euh, bonjour bien. à toutes. Ok, parfait. Donc, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Euh, donc, ici, c'est le matin, mais j'imagine que pour vous, c'est fin d'après-midi en France. Euh, donc, moi, c'est Marie-Aline Jagu. Je suis euh, consultante chez euh, PwC Canada à Toronto. Euh, donc, euh, ma mission principale est d'accompagner les entreprises, enfin, les organisations, parce que parfois, ce n'est pas forcément des entreprises mais dans leur transformation digitale et technologique. Je suis diplômée de MBS de la promo 2011. Et pendant mon parcours chez MBS, j'ai eu l'occasion euh, de partir étudier, travailler et vivre dans plusieurs pays, notamment le Chili, où j'y ai passé un an, mais également je suis partie en Angleterre et aux États-Unis. J'ai débuté ma carrière à Paris. Je voulais poser mes valises un petit peu. Donc, j'ai passé quelques années à Paris. Et maintenant, ça fait bientôt cinq ans que je suis immigrée au Canada, basée à Toronto. Euh, j'ai également co-créé et je suis responsable de l'antenne Toronto de MBS à Lumi. Et euh, je suis contente de participer à cette conférence aujourd'hui pour partager euh, mon expérience. Donc, à la fois les défis que j'ai rencontrés, mais aussi les, les bonnes surprises. Merci Marine. Bien, merci, euh, merci beaucoup Aline, Marine. Et je vais laisser la parole à André, et donc, pour un peu en savoir plus sur ce parcours impressionnant. Merci Marine pour animer cette émission d'abord en direct de l'Amérique du Nord et je crois que tu es pas très loin de San Diego aujourd'hui. Euh, je suis à San Diego moi-même et euh, merci pour ta présentation marie aline On va parler plus en détail de ton parcours. Je m'appelle donc André, euh, je suis vietnamien et breton d'origine. Euh, au point de vue formation, j'ai une double formation franco-américaine, à la fois ingénieur et de commerce, euh, suite à MBS. J'ai fait mon doctorat d'informatique à l'Université de Paris, puis je suis parti ensuite aux États-Unis pour euh, intégrer Harvard, où j'ai fait mon MBA. Au point de vue professionnel, j'ai commencé ma carrière chez Deloitte à Paris en tant qu'auditeur financier. Puis je suis parti aux États-Unis pour rejoindre Microsoft, où je suis devenu directeur général. J'ai quitté Microsoft pour devenir entrepreneur et CEO de trois start-up high-tech successivement sur la côte ouest des États-Unis, toutes financées par les VC de la Silicon Valley avec de très belles sorties. Depuis les 17 dernières années, j'ai consacré une grande partie de ma fortune et de mon temps à créer et à aider des organismes à but non lucratif dans l'éducation des enfants défavorisés. J'ai grandi dans la pauvreté et l'accès à l'éducation est important pour moi, car ça, ça, cela a bien changé ma vie. Donc, à présent, je voudrais repasser la parole à Marine et peut-être demander à Marine de à te présenter. Tu as un parcours assez intéressant et très différent de, de, de notre parcours de Marine, de Marie-Aline et moi. Super, merci, euh, merci André et Marie-Aline pour vous introduire. Euh, donc moi je suis Marine Michelet, originaire de la Nièvre euh, en France. Euh, je pense qu'en habitant de la campagne, ça m'a donné envie de encore plus découvrir le monde. Donc j'ai quand même beaucoup voyagé, j'ai vécu en Colombie pour les études, j'ai fait un master donc, du coup, avec MBS. Euh, et à la suite de ça, j'ai fait un VIE, donc je suis partie aussi voyager en Asie euh, pour être yoga teacher, plus voilà, développer d'autres pratiques du bien-être. Euh, ensuite de ça, j'ai fait un VIE donc à New York, euh, dans une boîte de consulting, euh, ce qui m'a donné aussi envie, voilà, de, je pense que l'ouverture sur l'Amérique et New York, de, de vivre de mes rêves. Donc aujourd'hui, j'ai quitté mon travail, euh, je vis dans un school bus en Amérique du Nord, donc je ne suis pas très loin d'André aujourd'hui, euh, en direction de San Diego, et j'habite voilà, dans un school bus et je suis à mon compte, donc je suis coach de vie. Euh, pour ceux qui sont plus curieux, n'hésitez pas à me contacter. 
Euh, donc voilà, donc euh, très heureuse d'avoir eu ce parcours euh, avec MBS et puis ensuite ça m'a donné des ailes pour pour réaliser ce dont j'avais euh, toujours rêvé. Ben, merci beaucoup à tous voilà de d'être introduit. Euh, donc comme Karina a dit, euh, donc la présentation va être en anglais aujourd'hui. Bien sûr, on voulait juste introduire dans un premier temps en français pour que tout le monde puisse euh, voilà s'habituer, bien comprendre. Mais nous allons euh, justement passer en anglais. Euh, Là maintenant. Donc, uh, welcome to this event. I'm very happy that you know we can all have this experience together and we can uh, share um, like more. We're going to share about um, the five secrets uh, to build a successful career in North America. Um, today we are with André and Marie Aline. Um, so I'm going to let them again to introduce themselves uh, in English. Um, so Marie Aline, the head of Toronto MBS Alumni branch, and André is the head of the California MBS Alumni branch with myself. Uh, so I'm very glad that we're all here together. They're going to share some advice. They're also going to share some challenges, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves right now. So again, I'll let you, Marie Aline, to introduce yourself. Sure. So maybe we can switch to the next slide, uh, Dominic. So, yeah, so you have an overview of basically the agenda. So, um, yeah, so um, as I mentioned before, so I started my career in Paris, so I'm going to start from there. Um, so after a couple of years working in Paris, I wanted to get a new challenge, and I really appreciated the experience I had abroad during my uh, period at MBS. Uh, so... Um, So I wanted to have a new uh, working experience in an English-speaking country uh, and outside of Europe. Uh, so I, at first I did a vacation trip in Canada uh, and I liked the experience very much. So, um, so when I went back to Paris, I, I did some research and I basically evaluated my, the different options I had uh, to immigrate. And so there are some options. So I started from like, I try to, um, to, you can get a visa when you're sponsored with a company. So I tried to get a job while I was still in France. So get a job in Canada. That was not very successful. So uh, I switched gears and I started to uh, get a visa first. And so I went through, so I can go into more details later in terms of uh, immigration process. So I got my visa, I quit my job in Paris and came to Canada. Uh, when I arrived in Toronto, I didn't know anybody and so I started to make some connections, search some opportunities in my field and based on my experience. Um, so basically I reached out to people, groups of um, immigrants so from different countries, Um, so I started from there. I finally found the job in my field, uh, what I was uh, searching for. So that was great. Uh, af and after a couple of months, I think it was almost a year, I, um, I started to um, contact the MBS. Actually, I contacted them before, but I wanted to create like uh, the Toronto branch of the MBS alumni network so that I could help and also just get together and help each other um, for everyone who were coming from France and from MBS so that we could like just share experiences and and start like a network because this is something that is very important in Canada uh, to build your own network. So uh, that's at a high level my journey uh, from Paris to Toronto after MBS. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Marie-Aline. Um, so can you tell us a bit more uh, on your side, uh, André? Yes, Marie-Aline. Uh, first, thank you for sharing your amazing journey to become a senior consultant at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers in Canada. For those who, of you who don't know what's uh, Pricewaterhouse, uh, it's uh, one of the most prestigious and most demanding consulting firm in the world. So congratulations, Marie-Aline. Uh, I think this round table is very rich uh, because uh, Marie-Aline, Marine and I all have very different paths. Marie-Aline successfully built her experiences in a large corporation. Uh, Marine succeeded 
as a personal coach and business consultant, and I'm in uh, startup ventures. When I graduated from uh, MBS, I started with Deloitte as a financial auditor. Then I got recruited by JP Morgan in London to specialize in merger ac acquisition. My goal was uh, to acquire financial skills. To me, financial skill is the most important field in business. That's why I focus on that in my early career. Then I took a big risk and came to the United States. I chose the United States because I knew that I could uh, get faster promotion than in France. I would not be disadvantaged because I don't have a diploma from Polytechnic or HSA uh, in the United States. I would uh, only be judged by my performance. So I joined Microsoft Corporation, a growing company at the time. Uh, at Microsoft, I started uh, at the bottom as a software engineer without any engineering experience. I grew through the rank at Microsoft to become the general manager with a full P&L responsibility over 400 employees and $500 million of revenue in less than two years, thing that I would not have been able to do in France. Then I left Microsoft to become an entrepreneur. I launched three different tech startups, all backed by venture capital from uh, the Silicon Valley. Uh, two of my startups fell. Uh, the last one raised uh, $25 million, and we had a very nice exit. I have learned in the US that the, uh, this is a land of opportunity, but also this is the land of uh, tolerance for failure. We uh, celebrate failure in the United States. The VC don't care about my MBA from Harvard. They care more about whether I have failed enough in order to gain enough learning experience from my failures. I learned from this failure. Uh, in France, a uh, French startup CEO told me that failure is not an option. Uh, in the US, it's quite the opposite. Here, you can fail and people will uh, value your failure. In France, you fail once, it's difficult to raise money. Uh, and, and as I say, it's very uh, different and the opposite than the US. So in a summary, my journey finance with uh, Deloitte and JP Morgan first, big corporation experience with Microsoft, then a startup entrepreneur. It's a rather uh, linear and straightforward uh, journey. And Marine, uh, perhaps you can uh, say a few words about your very unique journey and your motivation about uh, your journey since uh, you, are, you are also the moderator for this uh, uh, session. Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, yeah, on my side, I had like a couple of different experiences. I just wanted to move to New York for like doing my V, um, IE, and just, you know, having an experience. And of course, it changed my life because when you are in New York, um, it's different. Uh, all the opportunities, the networking, as uh, marie Ellen was saying, uh, you have to be there to meet people, to understand how it works. Um, I was working for a consulting firm, and then I just realized that um, it did not bring me enough meaning in my life, and I really wanted to do something else. So when the COVID hit, um, I just wanted to take advantage of that situation. So I decided to quit my job and then to move um, into a school bus and also to create my own company. And for me, success is also when you take your own decision and take your own action. Uh, that's also what um, I learned from the US, is that everything is possible. You just have to give a try. If you fail, as Andre said, it's totally fine because then you get to learn. Um, it's not about, yeah, negative um, experience. It's about feedback. It's what did you learn from that experience? So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to try it. And now, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm very happy and perhaps I'm going to fail, perhaps I'm not, but it's not a big risk. So that's uh, my, my journey and what's also being in North America um, holds me. Thank you. So also, um, you can go to the next slide if you want, uh, Dominique. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, Marie-Aline, why did you choose uh, Canada? Uh, what was your purpose uh, beyond this country? Did you have any expectation or anything? Um, sure. So, um, so initially, so as I, as I mentioned, I, I went to Canada as, like uh, for a vacation trip. So I didn't have any expectation. I was just, I just wanted to just discover the country. And so that's where I connected with local people here. And I got like a really, I don't know, positive feelings 
uh, about, about the country and I wanted to have like an experience, a professional experience in an English speaking country because through MBS you, you can do like, uh, you can study abroad, but it's different from like when you study and when you walk actually. So, um, so that's why. And I, yeah, I, I, I was feeling that uh, it would be uh, maybe a, a good fit uh, with my, my experience and also what I was um, searching for. So, so I give it a try, as you mentioned, Marine. So I said, okay, I'm going to try. And if I don't like it, then I can always come back to France because I liked working in Paris. It was a great experience as well. So it's not because I didn't like Paris or I didn't like France that I came here. It was more like to experience something different and maybe learn from people that don't work the same way I do. And um, yeah, and so so I, I gave it a try. And um, as I mentioned, I, I came to Canada, I didn't have any job. So I would say at the beginning, it's a bit stressful because you're just leaving a, a maybe a potentially great job in France uh, for nothing. <laughs> so yeah. you just, yeah, you, you just try, and I think it's um, the best decision you can make. I mean, for me, it's, I don't regret it, really. And um, yeah, and, and now I realize that uh, I like very much this country, the way they work, and also the work-life balance. So um, yeah, so it was, was a, good, a good fit. Also, an immigration is not always uh, easy. So you just need to be prepared that sometime you're going to have some surprises or um, challenges and that, that's okay because when you overcome them, then you'll feel more like even more proud of yourself. So um, yeah, so, so far it's been a great experience and I can share later some challenges I, I faced, but uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, the, the most difficult I think thing is to just decide and come to the country. Like, just quit your job and you come, and that's okay. It's gonna gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Maria Lina. You, you're right. It's gonna be just giving a try. But also, we're gonna speak about all the challenges uh, in the next question. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, yeah, it's like just to try. Also, to know your why, why, what's your, what's your motivation, why you want to go there, and just to keep that inside yourself, and then you can do whatever you want if you have a, a purpose. And what about you, Andre? Can you tell us a bit more about, yeah, why did you go to North America? What was your expectation? Was it like very like goal oriented or just um, kind of random? Yes, my as I mentioned in the um, earlier uh, explanation and of my uh, journey, it's a very simple uh, professional goal. I know that I would uh, progress much faster in the United States, and I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I know that I need to acquire some skill before being coming, becoming an entrepreneur, and I know that uh, to be an entrepreneur is the best uh, country to be. So that's how I decided to go to the United States. How about okay. you, Mary? What's your motivation <laughs> to come to the United States? Uh, I think it was, uh, to be honest with you guys, it was more like a love affair. I just uh, fell in love with someone and I was like, I want to make it happen, so I'm going to find a job in the US. So that was my why. That's why it's very important to clarify this before with yourself, before moving to a, a new country. But again, you know, it's like about experience. It can work, it can not, but everything is going it's going quite cool. <laughs> Thank you, Marie, for that question. Um, so yeah, I wanted to jump to the question about all the challenges and especially about the work permits. Uh, if you can tell us a bit more about the visa, what have you done so far? Um, this time you can start, Andre, if you want. Uh, thank you. So I face a lot of challenges in the United States, but I want to focus on uh, three particular challenges that uh, really come to my mind. The first one is about the legal process to obtain a work permit, like Maria Yalin already uh, evoked. The uh, second uh, one is the professional challenge, specifically to corporate America that I face when I work for a large corporation like Microsoft. And the third one is the challenge that I face as an entrepreneur, as a CEO of a, a startup backed by venture capital from a 
Silicon Valley. So first, legal challenge and work permit. It is very difficult to get a job in the United States without understanding the legal process uh, to get a work permit. Uh, and I think in the next uh, chapter, Maria Lin, uh, Marina and I, we will uh, give you our practical advice of how to obtain different types of work permit in the United States as well as in Canada in a few minutes. Secondly, a professional challenge uh, or challenges in the American corporation. In corporate America, uh, you are expected to deliver high performance, more than in France. When I started at Microsoft in the United States, my individual performance was constantly assessed. When I become general manager, my team performance, in addition to my individual performance, become the focus. Compared to France, I felt that the standard and the expectation were higher in the United States. Uh, in France, even though I work for American companies such as Deloitte & Touche and JP Morgan, my manager never asked me to do more. They were polite. They never told me things to my face. At Microsoft, my manager were constantly straightforward and told me uh, straight to my face whether I did well or whether I didn't ex exceed expectations. So expectation is very, very high in the United States. A third type of challenge, startup challenge, and I will address more about how to run a startup and how to raise money in the US during the next session of the American Dream Series by the uh, California MBS alumni next month in April 20, uh, 2021. But in summary, the biggest challenge I faced was uh, to deal with uh, venture capital firms. VC constantly expect my startup to show that we can grow uh, big and fast, unlike in France where exponential growth is not always expected from startup. So um, uh, I'd like to uh, give the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, air time to uh, Marie-Aline now. Thank you, André. So, and I think I'm gonna have some like similarities with your challenges, André. So um, I think the first one, so same here, I, I had like <clears throat> four in mind, like four main challenges. Uh, first, immigration, as you mentioned, André. Uh, second, I would say the job search and interviews. Third, the language, the day-to-day -day conversations. And fourth, I would say cultural differences. So the first one, as you mentioned, André, it's, uh, it's a really key, uh, like the immigration process. Um, so there are some, like, there are several options to immigrate to Canada. And initially, as I mentioned, I tried to get sponsored by a, co by a company because I, I wanted to keep my job and search at the same time for a job in Canada, but from France. That was not the best option for sure. Um, so I did another process. And at the time, it was a brand new process, which is called Express Entry. So I can talk further like about that later, but uh, it was brand new, so it was hard to find some information online. So now it's easier maybe because you have some feedback from people who went through the same process. So, and, and at the time when you are not sure that you're going to find a job, you have to spend quite a good amount of money uh, just for the visa and you don't have anything else. You don't have like a, a work. So, you really need to be focused and say, okay, I really want to immigrate. That's okay. That's a budget. I want to dedicate to the immigration process. And, and, and that's uh, something that is actually uh, mandatory. So yeah, you just need to went through this process. There are quite a few steps. And um, so I can give me more detail about that later. But uh, yeah, and otherwise uh, the job search uh, so it really depends on your field, uh, uh, where, I mean, what type of job are, are you looking for? And this is something um, that is very important, I think, to, to, to focus on a, a field and know what you're looking for. And um, yeah, all the process regarding the job search, so starting from scratch, a brand new resume adapted to the local country and, when, and go through the different interviews. So uh, the interviews here are quite different. Uh, I think, and Andre, you mentioned that they're way more focused on your experience. And I know here we have some uh, students, and don't think that you don't have any experience yet because you can always volunteer, you can always 
do some uh, internship during your studies. You can have like summer jobs. This is really, really important when you arrive here. And they don't, uh, I mean, it's as important as a, a typical like uh, business or job. Uh, it's, it's, and volunteering here, it's, it's so important. So anyway, the, the job search process was kind of a challenge and um, the language. So when you get a job and you go on site, you're in your office and um, so the basically the informal conversation, like the local expressions, like something that you don't learn at school. I think at the beginning it's uh, a bit overwhelming. After a couple of weeks or months, you get used to it, so that that's fine. But um, yeah, just just starting like in a new country, a new job with new colleagues, new new language and local expression. It it was a uh, a bit hard to be efficient. Uh, and but that uh, after a while it, it was okay but uh, yeah so at the beginning it was uh, some kind of um, bit hard i was sleeping very well at night <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah and otherwise cultural differences so um that's the last one uh well when you come to france from france and you go to canada you don't necessarily expect like a big uh uh cultural differences but there are some and just yeah, you just need to be prepared, open-minded. So uh, just an example uh, here, it's sometimes it can take some time to build like strong friendship or strong relationship with the locals. Uh, you just need to be patient, that, that's fine. But at the beginning, you are just like acting as like a French person in, in, in France, which is not necessarily the, the good option, but uh, yeah. So some cultural differences, I would say, but yeah, that's mainly it. Mm -hmm. okay. Marine, perhaps uh, you can share some of your experience uh, and summarize the, uh, some of the things that you already shared last uh, in the last uh, session of the uh, American Dream. But I think it's yeah, interesting sure. to contrast with what uh, Maria Lynn has uh, experienced. <laughs> yeah, on my side, so as I told you, I live uh, in New York and now I'm more on the other side. But in New York, when I arrived, of course, I was very shy about my French accent. Uh, but then when I was speaking in, in English, uh, everyone were like, oh my God, you're French. So it's so, so great to go, to move to the country and to realize that um, it's fine. You can speak, you know? And what I would say behind that is like, you should not put so much uh, pressure on yourself and just go and you're gonna see and everything's gonna be fine. So for me, what's one of the big, biggest learning about, oh, I'm, at the end, it's, it's okay. I can speak in English and having my French accent. So that was also the first one. And like in terms of challenges, was more, I guess, um, in the professional side, um, about the lunch break, everyone is working in front of the computer and they're not going to stop. Uh, about the culture of like grabbing food uh, from outside and eating that in front of the computer. Like it's kind of like running behind time. Like it's always that feeling that I had. But like, can we have time to breathe? But I mean, I'm, I'm going to still be productive, but people just, just have like different job, different life. I was very amazed about that. But also, yeah, um, these things about, yeah, everything is going fast, but also like when you work, uh, it's like a nonstop. And the third one um, was more uh, like the way to negotiate and to get clients and to, your relationship with clients, I would say, is very uh, informal. Uh, going to a restaurant is absolutely normal. Uh, taking some drinks with your clients, having um, like a chit chat at the beginning, having a housebreaker at the beginning of the conversation. And like for example, one of my clients one day uh, told me about his life, his daughter, uh, the gifts that he had from birthday or from his birthday and so on. So I was like, oh my God, he's sharing a lot about himself. And I felt kind of close at the end of the conversation. He was here to negotiate. He was here to get the deal. And I kind of, you know, get confused because I was like, oh my God, it's kind of like a friend, but it's not. So just be careful on that. I guess like business is business, time is time is money. So just keep that in mind. So that was from my experience. Can you hear me? I'm back, I, I'm sorry. I, I got, I clicked on the okay. button, I disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> no, perfect. No, thank you. 
Um, just one um, last question. Um, so, Marianne, you were saying that you wanted to give more details about the process for the visa and so on. Um, can you just share with us uh, some yeah, details about the, the deadline, the timeline? Uh, you told us about the budget. I think that was very relevant that people have to be, be prepared to, to have like a budget dedicated to that. If you have any more details for... Uh, Sure. So I can I can give you some ideas. So um, well, it, it it can also depend on where you want to go in Canada because Canada is separated by like uh, provinces and territories. Uh, so some immigration options are common, some are different, and that's above all the case for Quebec. Uh, so uh, you have some options that can work uh, with Quebec. So for example, the <coughs> permis vacances travail, which is a PVT. Uh, so that's one of the options, but basic, mainly, uh, basically, <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, you can come without a job. So, for example, if you're interested in uh, going to an uh, English-speaking province, you can uh, choose the, uh, to do the permanent residency. That's what I did. Uh, so what's the permanent residency? It's basically, it's more known uh, for the U.S., it's basically like a some kind of green card um, and so the uh, like I mean the positive things about that is that when you arrive here you have all the rights like above all like you have any uh, you, you can join any company basically you are free to to join any organization you're not tied to a company so that's that's better and basically you have the same rights as the Canadian except the right of vote uh, but basically, that's what I did. I did the express entry, uh, so it's uh, to get the permanent residency. And now I am in the process of um, applying for the uh, uh, citizenship, so Canadian citizenship. Uh, so for English-speaking provinces, I would say that's the best option. So per permanent residency, and then uh, you can get, you can go through the process of citizenship. If you want to go, um, if you're not sure or you want to try the PVT, like PVT, it's two years, uh, you can also try that. That's, uh, it's easier now to get it than uh, it was before. And for Quebec, it's also specific. So I would say um, online you have the most updated um, options, and it's really based on where you want to go. So first, have an idea of where you want to go, above all when it's Quebec versus Ontario or other provinces. Yeah, that uh, would be yeah. my first advice. And if you don't know, you just come here on vacation and you go around and explore <laughs> and see what, what you prefer. So, yeah. I mean, I think there, are, there was a question uh, that was sent to me by email with regard to how to oh, okay. uh, open a VIE and a work permit in uh, in the United States in UN New York with a VIE project. So how to get that? How do you have yes. a job? Yes. So uh, the, the yeah. question was uh, how 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 do you get there and what it is that you done in order to be able to work in New York? Okay. Okay. Clear. So should I answer now? It's fine. Yes, go ahead, and then I will explain the yeah. process of visa uh, through my own experience. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so on my side, to be honest with you, I was um, in India. Um, I was like in Asia, uh, doing my yoga teacher training and applying to job to New York. So I was not in New York uh, to find a job. I use a lot you know, the platform, um, the CV web platform, and also what I did so far is that I contact a lot of people that they had. A VI in the past. I got a list of all the um, previous VI in the US. I contact all the companies. I call them. Um, I reach out to people on LinkedIn. I send emails uh, to either LND to people in the same situation as mine, um, either to French company in the US, uh, to French district, French morning, all the, you know, Chambre de Commerce um, uh, in the US. Um, so, what I did so far was like looking everywhere. And also there is like a French tech, all the startup, they are also looking for like French, like in the US. So then I, I just got an answer, like a positive answer. I did all the, the four um, interviews and I got a job. Uh, to be honest, it was not so easy. It was like very like hard um, work 
before it to understand like how can I get one. Uh, but what I say, what I can advise is like look around you, look into your network, everyone, everywhere. Um, if you get some creativity to contact like a new, like like a new company, either I've, I think what um, Marianne and I were saying about like voluntary is about um, also suggesting something to company, not being like, well, I'm I want a job. And I did this uh, school. It's about like being creative in your positioning, um, like being like I'm French, just to show them the benefit of having you in the company. That thing that uh, helped me to sell myself um, to an American, like French um, company in America. So yeah, it's also put yourself in the shoes of the company. Uh, think what they need, what they are looking for, and how can you show them that there is a perfect match. Um, so that's from my experience. And then I, I got the, you know, when the, it's a go uh, from the company, um, they, they take care with parenthesis, like with a sponsor, everything about the visa. So then it's very easy. It was, um, visa was a G1. So it's, it's about, you can say one year, one year and a half in the US. So then it's very easy about the process. When you got the, the company, then it's fine. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Yes. Yeah. No, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> So I'd like to answer a question that Julian, or Julian uh, asked yeah. about how to get the visa in the United States. So the best way, uh, Julian, to get a visa in the United States is to marry an uh, American woman. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to get married at the time, and I didn't find a law affair <laughs> like in, in the United States. So this is my process, and I'm uh, sending the different type of visa that I have to walk through, uh, through the chat room, and I will di discuss uh, one by one. So the first visa that I got is called J1 visa, which is a student visa that you can obtain while being a student in a French university. With the J1 visa, you are allowed to work full-time in the United States for 18 months. Uh, and um, you are the one who must file the J1 application with the United States Embassy. In my case, I obtained my J1 visa uh, to work for Microsoft when I was uh, studying and registered with the University of Paris for my doctorate in informatics. Then after my 18 month uh, expire, I went through the second visa, which is the student visa uh, called F1 visa that you can obtain as a student in a, a American university. When I studied for my MBA at Harvard, Harvard issued me a F1 visa. The F1 visa allowed you to work part-time up to 20 hours a week. Then when I exhausted my uh, uh, F1 visa, I went through the third type of visa, which is a H1B a visa, which is a temporary working permit that the hiring company processed for, for you. Uh, Microsoft Corporation was the one that processed my H1B visa. The H1B visa lasts up to five years, three years with uh, two years of renewal. And then after five years, you are eligible to become United States uh, permanent residency with a green card. And then after 10 years, you are you are automatically become a United States citizen. So that's uh, my uh, uh, process. So I, I saw uh, a, a, co a comment here from Michael that said that L1 is good too if you work for an international company. Yes, that's right, uh, Michael. The L1 allows you to work as an uh, exchange, uh, as an expatriate from an international company with a branch in the United States. And I saw a lot of uh, French uh, 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 student from MBS working for French company in the New York uh, with their L1 visa. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Marie. Yeah, on my side, uh, my, my experience was uh, so I married myself uh, with like a, my husband now. Uh, he's got a L1, so now I got a L2. Uh, because that's the things, you know, you got a job, it's great, you have a visa, but then when you want to quit your job, you lost your visa. So as uh, Andre said, then you have to figure out something. And sometimes very someone, someone is, is great, but I mean, still like uh, my partner. But, so that's kind of like um, like a, a solution. Also, there is a business visa. I'm going to check uh, I can share with you. Um, do you know, Marie-Aline, the visa like B1? Or B2 is like a visa that allow you to work uh, yeah. in Canada, but just for six months. Yeah. And I heard like about this visa, sometimes people, because you know, it's easier when you are in Canada than to go to the US. So there is some tricks around that. You can go to Canada and then go from Canada to the US and to do some back and forth. Um, but 
this I don't have like that much details, but I can look for that uh, if some people are interested. Yeah, so in the United States, we have a okay. special visa called E1 visa, which is the entrepreneur investor visa. If you bring 250,000 uh, US dollars in the United States and you create great, great job, they give you an E1 visa. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I posted uh, like uh, some notes for Canada as well. Basically, what I did for uh, for Canada. So the, you are you have different options, but what that's what I did. So permanent residency, and after I think three years, but I then you have to basically after three years you, you can apply for Canadian citizenship, but you have to remove all the time that you spent outside of the country. And because I was working for an international company, like traveling in many countries, I had to remove a lot of uh, time. So that's why I waited a bit more. That's, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay, great. Um, also, I wanted to ask you a question for you, uh, Marie-Hélène, from uh, Yasmin. Um, so I would like to know what the job market in Toronto at this moment. Um, who are the chance, chances to, of getting a job as a foreigner during the pandemic? Okay. So maybe you have more information about okay. also the impact of the context now. I see, and Yasmin, you are in MSC Finance. Okay. Um, so the job market is very dynamic. So now, uh, because of COVID, the uh, border is still, is still closed. So uh, students and uh, newcomers cannot cross the border yet. I think even when you have um, a, P a PVT, so a work visa, you need to have a job before uh, coming to Canada, which was not the case before COVID. Uh, but once they are going to reopen the border, I think it's going to be way easier. And as I mentioned, so the job market is here it's very dynamic. It was dynamic before COVID and now it's even more because they want to rebuild the economy basically. And Canada is um, it's an immigration country. They need people from outside of Canada uh, to, um, to develop the, the economy. They don't have enough Canadian locals um, in order to, um, to, to fit all, I mean, to apply and, and and uh, like f uh, fill all the position, uh, open positions. Uh, so if you're, I see you're studying in finance, uh, this is the finance capital of Canada, Toronto, and also the um, economic capital of Canada. So uh, you have a lot of job opportunities here if you are looking for in finance, but there are other opportunities outside like in Vancouver, in Calgary, uh, in uh, Montreal, of course, Toronto, Ottawa. Uh, in Ottawa, so the capital of uh, Canada, they are looking for um, bilingual people. And I didn't mention that before, but when they say bilingual uh, folks here, they are talking about French. So, uh, and that was one of the surprises I mentioned. I, we were talking about that uh, with Andre and Marine earlier. So one of the first question I had in interviews here was, um, are, are you bilingual? And when you arrive from France, you're, you feel a bit ashamed about your accent and you're not really sure about um, if you're fluent or not. And so I was thinking, well, you tell me if I am bilingual or not. And um, so they ask, they say, oh, do you speak French? And of, so I was like, oh, of course I, I speak French. So that, that's the definition of being bilingual here. It's being able to speak French. They don't, they really don't care about your accent. As I mentioned, it's an immigration country and above all in Toronto, it's very international. So you can hear accent from all around the world. So, um, and, and French is very key here. Like really above all when you are working in an English speaking province, uh, such as uh, Ontario, because we, we work with Quebec, we work with uh, uh, French-speaking uh, clients. Um, so this is really uh, like a really key um, skill to have and to showcase. And so, uh, yeah, so again, so the, the job market is very dynamic. Uh, it, we just need to wait a couple of months for the border to reopen. 
Um, but uh, I won't be worried about uh, any, like, if you're working in finance, that's not a problem. I think you can, you can try. And you can, you can start getting some contacts online, uh, in LinkedIn. But really, really the more, most effective way to find a job is really to come on site to come here. Um, but yeah, because now the border is closed, so you can start like looking for job offers online. And same as in, in the US, I think, uh, for the job offers, uh, not everything is posted. So if you don't see any job offer that fits well with your profile, you can just reach out to the person, to the HR, which is related to the offer. Um, don't, don't be afraid of like reaching out to people directly. Um, so yeah. So yeah, job market is very dynamic here in many <laughs> fields. Not only yes, finance, I, concur, right? I concur with uh, Maria Lynn. Uh, uh, same thing uh, in the United States, the job market is very uh, growing, uh, uh, especially now that we are coming out of uh, COVID and uh, almost 25% of, of the uh, United States citizen got uh, uh, COVID vaccination. So the economy is uh, booming again. And now uh, one way to find a job, permanent job is through internship. Uh, the United States and I posted on the uh, chat I had a new strategy of hiring called the intern to hire. They hire intern in order to assess and uh, almost like a trial period. And then um, if you are performing well, you, you get the permanent um, a job offer. Uh, in order to get internship, the best way is to take advantage of uh, you uh, still being a French uh, student. Uh, you can get a, a, a J1 visa to work for 18 months uh, full time. And that's uh, the best way to get internship because the U.S. company will not have to worry about uh, uh, processing the visa for you. Uh, uh, again, J-1 visa allow you to work in the United States and you're the one who, that, who process that. As long as you uh, are a student in the French university, there's uh, the possibility for J-1. Uh, and then to find internship, uh, there are some that are posted uh, on the website of the company. Usually, you want to search for internship uh, for summer by applying before March of uh, the year before summer. And um, many uh, jobs are not posted, like Maria Aline has said, so you have to approach them. The best job offer uh, and the most spontaneous one are found now in the United States with a venture capital back company. And uh, to find the company that got backed by venture capital, I tapped the, uh, in the chat room, go to a, a source called Tech, Tech Crunch. Uh, that lists every week, actually every day, company that receive funding. And those are the company that uh, would give you very easily internship because uh, internship is uh, cheap labor for them uh, and it's flexible for them to keep you or to fire you if you don't do the job properly. Yeah, I wanted to add something on that. It's true that in the US when I was working for a company, uh, I met a lot of different employees because, you know, they can fire you very easily. Um, so that's uh, very like, important to say. Uh, based on the question to um, like uh, Lauren, Sophie, Coralie, Margot, they wanted to have more information about, um, to know more about working in Canada, networking and other tips. So I guess I mean, you already gave a lot of information. Margot, let us know if you have if you need more details. Then Caroline has more information about working in North America, especially in Canada. So for you again, Maria Lynn. Um, yeah, if you have any more equation, guys, like we still have like six minutes uh, together, so feel free to, to ask. Um, yeah, and Sophie was, I would like to know if it's possible to find a job in North America since I'm not a citizen or graduate there. Um, so as we said, yeah, yeah, it's totally possible. And things, uh, I think Andre um, gave a very uh, good uh, advice about finding an internship. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. Yeah, Tech Crush, it's a good uh, application. Yeah, do you have more questions, everyone? Feel free to, to ask. Uh, before we add uh, more questions, I think what we can do is also conclude uh, because we were speaking about five uh, secrets uh, to build a career in North America. So can you do like a summary or like to give us as a conclusion, the five secrets that people have to take back home? 
Hey, Aline, first. <laughs> Thank you, André. <laughs> So, so yeah, kind of I mean, yeah, thank you, Andre. So I didn't uh, really prepare that, but uh, I mean, I, I did, I did have some some advice, but uh, yeah, I mean, successful is is very different from one person to another. Uh, it really depends on what you're looking for and what why did you immigrate? Why do you want to immigrate to the U.S. or Canada? Um, and what do you want to like find here? So. Um, but I would give some advice based on, on my experience. And this is really personal. So, uh, so um, yeah, you, you can use also like feedbacks and comments on, on forums. But uh, yeah, so first I would say really focus on the immigration process again. Uh, just get a visa. It's not so complicated. Like the, I added some notes, the express entry is quite easy to do It's just a process with points so you get points more if you um, have a good level of English good level of French um, so it's it's quite well explained uh, but yeah first I would say this is your first focus uh, if you don't know exactly where you want to go uh, again you can come here on vacation and and go around and see what you would prefer the west coast the east coast uh, or other country, or other cities, um, and uh, I would say don't don't limit yourself to Montreal. This is the go-to destination for many French people, but there are way more options in Canada. Uh, if you go to an English-speaking province, your French will be a really really great asset. Uh, they are looking for bilingual uh, professionals, um, and and it's even like written on the job offer, like bilingual financial analyst or bilingual, etc. So this is something that, uh, like a, a recruiter told me one day, they say we can we can uh, teach someone to do like to use a tool uh, to work a certain way, etc. But we we cannot teach language. So French is very key here. Uh, so don't limit yourself to Quebec or Montreal. Uh, and don't limit yourself also to uh, like big cities. In Toronto, there are a lot of jobs, but there are a lot of job offers elsewhere in Canada as well, in like maybe smaller uh, towns. And because uh, like people are, go to Toronto or Montreal first, they are really willing to welcome you. And sometimes they even have uh, way more uh, opportunities to immigrate there. So I would say, so first, immigration process. And two, I would say common sites. So really. Uh, before the decision, you can come on vacation. And when you decided, okay, I want to immigrate, I want to go to Toronto, let's say, come here, really. Um, come here, uh, get in touch with people, reach out. Uh, I say that because if you're trying to contact people from France, and uh, let's say they are interested in your profile, they want to meet you right away. They want to meet you tomorrow, and they want you to start on Monday. So it's, it can be really, really quick. Uh, so I would say, come on site, don't be afraid, and um, what else, what else? Uh, yeah, and for the job search, I would say, while you're here, uh, don't hesitate to take like a part-time job or do some volunteering. That will help you to be more confident with your English and get prepared for the interviews. And again, volunteering is very important here. This is something that is uh, uh, scanned uh, by, the, by the recruiter. Um, so, yeah, so I would say that's the best preparation, both for your confidence and also to get the mood of the the local uh, people and, uh, yeah, get to know, um, yeah, local local folks here. And, and lastly, I would say, again, uh, just I, I mentioned that before, but uh, really focus on and highlight the fact that you're bilingual. I already mentioned that several times. Uh, but uh, this is something very important here. So um, yeah. So at a high level, that's my that's my uh, advice. And again, this is really personal. You can find other advice online, of course. But uh, yeah, at Marie, high level. Marie, do I you give like the to mic add? to Andre. <laughs> yes, Marie, do you like to add uh, something? I like to, and then I give me time to think about it. Uh, and yeah, no reason. We have more questions. So it's, it's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to say something that I forgot to tell you. It's more about look at the um, Facebook group. 
there is a huge uh, French community. Uh, I mean, in New York, uh, I lived in Montreal, so it was the same. But you know, they have this spirit about like uh, MBS uh, alumni. Like when you are part of this, you have the same situation. Uh, so you share like common interests. So it's great to contact to French people, also that they already live in Montreal, but you can find on on Facebook. And um, there is two more questions. No, Cecile and Margot. Cecile, uh, if you are not a student anymore, do you advise an internship anyway? The, the, short, um, answer yes. the, the short answer yes, because yeah. um, uh, as far as the U.S. is concerned, as I mentioned, the U.S. Uh, hiring strategy is to hire intern for hire, meaning that they hire intern with the uh, possibility to assess before giving a permanent job. So yes, definitely you need to have a, an internship. Uh, especially if you come from a different country. Uh, however, when you uh, are not student anymore, it's not possible to have a J-1 visa. So I would uh, advise to find a, J, uh, a different type of visa, either a, um, a, 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 H, a, a F-1 visa as a student of a United States uh, university, or uh, going through the route of Canada, like um, Maria Aline suggested, which is much easier. And then, uh, and then find a way to go to the United States through a U.S. corporation. Yeah. And just for, for yeah. Canada here, uh, oops, and I see I see we're on time. But uh, for Cecile, uh, in Canada, I would say uh, the internship visa is mostly the same thing. So, and they have lots of students here. So, I would say uh, here it's better to um, try to find a job. Uh, because they, there are lots of um, concurrence with uh, like local uh, students here, uh, but you c you can find a job and this is uh, the same visa, basically a work visa, and um, yeah, and and, uh, and and don't hesitate to also find another like a job that is uh, uh, maybe not exactly what you're looking for, but at, at least you get started and and you start to building your network. So that's very important. So uh, yeah, and other question I see, Margot, quickly. Uh, is yeah. it easier to evolve change responsibility or mission in a company in Canada? Are the conditions for changing jobs um, or companies more flexible than in France? Uh, yes, they are. Um, so you can easily change from one company to another, and you can also evolve um, horizontally. So instead of like getting more responsibility, you can switch from one service to another. I would say as long as you you focus on your project and your goals, why are you changing and you are willing to uh, present this project to a recruiter, that, that's fine. And they are very flexible with that. I'm working with people that have a very diverse background. Sometimes they switch careers and it's very something that is totally okay here. I'm, I'm working with, um, there is a, like a policeman in, in my, in my group, so it really it's a um, it's a uh, it's very op they are open as long as you you defend like your your project your your like you know your goals and why you're changing and uh, yeah it's it's totally possible and they are they are they are open for that yeah for sure that's for my goal thank you everyone <laughs> perfect yeah secure run so uh, I think we. We are on time. Um, I, I guess we already answered all the questions. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, if you have more questions or anything on my side, I would be more than happy to, to help you. Uh, thank you, Bukali. <laughs> cool. So thank you, everyone. I think we can close the, the webinar. Would you like to add something, um, Andre or Marie-Aline? Marie-Aline? I would say, I, I would say <laughs> go ahead, André. Uh, yes. No, I, it was a no a great experience. I'm I'm happy if if I could help on anything regarding Canada. Uh, this is something new for us too. So if you have any other question after the conference, feel free to reach out and maybe you can share. Um, I don't know with the MBS. I don't know if it's otherwise. You can reach out directly to me, André or Marine, I believe. And uh, yeah, so um, great experience. This is um, something that uh, we, I think we were very excited about. So um, yeah, glad to be here today. And uh, I hope that that helps. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh -huh. Marjane.
Uh, je vais condu uh, I'm going to conclude the, uh, the meeting in French. So, merci à Marie-Aline et à Marine et, uh, et pour cette émission que nous... Et je voudrais vous donner rendez-vous au mois prochain, jeudi 15 avril à 16h, pour la troisième épisode de la série American Dream qui va s'intituler « Comment les VC américains évaluent les start-up ventures et comment les start-up françaises peuvent lever de l'argent aux États-Unis ». C'est le même cours que j'enseigne à Harvard Business School depuis quelques années et qui est classé parmi les classes les plus populaires aux États-Unis. Donc, au nom de l'équipe de MBS Alumni Canada, Marie-Aline, et MBS Alumni Californie, Marine, je vous dis encore merci et bonsoir à tous. Merci à tous. Au merci revoir. À tous. Merci Marine. Merci André et à l'équipe de Toronto. De Toronto de MBS Alumni qui nous a aidé à organiser ce... Ouais, ce Dominique, webinar. merci Dominique. <rire> et on va, on va oui. rejoindre bientôt ton pot là, dans quelques instants. <rire> ouais, c'est ça. <rire> L'after D-Day. <rire> <rire> <rire>